Gonna go over crankshaft and block identification on the two-stroke three-cylinder. So that chart right there, that'll show you pretty much what you need to know. And eventually I'll get that on my website, but that's the breakdown of what you've got. And we're gonna go over that right here, right now. So, and just to be clear on what the weights are, these are called T weights because they obviously look like a T. Those are the standard. We call these full circle because they look like a full circle. Then a hybrid has one of each. It'll have a full circle and a T. And we put the T to the rear to get better fuel flow. So here's the different cranks you're going to have. Um, this is your standard crankshaft. Doesn't matter if it's a 56 through uh, 68, a standard mixer is right here, okay? It's no oil injection, strictly mix. The rear of the crank will hold two rings, and we are remaking those rings now in a butt lock. So you can see how there's two rings on the back there. Next to it is a 750 GT. So the 750s were non-oil injected. So it's just got six full circle weights rather than six T weights. If you wanted to make it into a hybrid, you'd just add three of the T weights to the rear of each, okay? So that's the first two there. That fits your blocks. Your 707706 is your standard mixer 750 bullnose. And then the 713, anytime it starts with a 713, that's a GT part number for 750. This one is really rare. I don't even think we have it in the States. Um, and then there's, there's a, your standard 850 mixer block, which is real common. You'll see that a lot. These are all single carbs. Then we're gonna move into our, our GT carb, or our GT block, GT crank. So a GT, what's gonna be different about that, it's gonna have a tapered nose. It's not going to have the three rings on the back. They're actually captured inside of a sleeve. So they'll have a sleeve on the back here and they're captured in here, okay? So that's your GT. And where we get into problems is your, G, your oil injected cranks have slingers on them. I call them oil slingers. And these are just a tin piece that's been added to the crankshaft to direct oil directly into the rod pin. So the GT has three of these oil slingers. There's one, two, and on the back we have three. Does not have one on the back side of number two. But when we move into our Lubrication Deluxe crank, then we have one on the backside also. And that's the same as what we have on a Monte Carlo, which is a 515 block. So you've got a three oil slinger crank, one, two, three, and then you've got the one with four. So the later, the, the, the Lubrication Deluxe and the Monte Carlo all have four of these oil slingers. And the problem you get into is the Later, oil-injected four-slinger crank has four cutout areas in the block. See in there? One, two, three, four. So if you try to put an, a later crank into an earlier, say, a GT or an early Monte Carlo block, this area is not cut out. See that here? This area is cut. This area is not cut, so this slinger is not going to fit. So I can't put this crankshaft into that block. So here we've got the breakdown of that. So these are your three, your three oil slinger injected blocks. 716 is the first part numbers of any 850 GT, just like we had 713 here, it's 716 here. If you see any of those prefix, those um, preceding numbers, 713, 716, you know that's automatically a GT part. So here we also have the early Monte Carlo block. Excuse me, that's a, a early uh, single car block mixer. And then here the 1015 gets into your Monte Carlo block. So your early, your GT and your early Monte Carlos used a three oil slinger block or crank and then block two. So you cannot, you can put these cranks into the later blocks because they've only got three oil slingers and your blocks are cut for four. So you can do that, but you cannot take a crank out of a 515 
or an 045 and put it into your early Monty, early Monty or your GT stuff. So that's where you kind of got to know what you've got there. So this bottom half here has got no cutout areas for an oil slinger. So I know automatically this is a, a mixer bottom half. I don't have to wonder what it is. It's got a part number on the back that'll tell me two. Next over, we've got a cover that's got three oil slinger spots. One, two, three. Missing the fourth one. That tells me it's a GT or an early Monte Carlo block. Or cover, whichever. And then here we've got the four slinger which tells me it's an 045 or a 515 oil injected late block. And again, your slingers are right here on the crank. So if you've got a crank and you're missing this, that's injected and you're missing this part here, that tells you it's an early Monte Carlo or GT crank. Another way to quick tell your, um, some of your stuff apart, all of your Monte Carlos have a tapered, um, tapered nose cone. So they're tapered, and then the pulley has to be tapered to fit. The standard, or the mixer, they're straight. So obviously if I put that in there, it ain't gonna, it's not going to fit very well. So all your standard pulleys have a small, same size on both ends, hole, so that your rod nose will go in. And obviously this, this won't go in here. Fit. So tapered, tapered equals Monte Carlo and GT. Straight equals lubrication deluxe and mixer. And the last thing we'll look at real quick is the front end parts. So if we have a mixer engine, this gear is going to be different. It's going to be just one little curved area cut up, tapered inside. It's got the keyway cut. It's an easy way to tell it's got a keyway. That's gonna fit your mixer keyways, okay? It's gonna fit these guys right here. Then it's gonna have an aluminum sleeve behind with dual seals on the inside and an aluminum funky looking one on the uh, outside that ties in to everything here that's on there. Now when we move into our Monte Carlo, it's going to be different. The Monte Carlo parts, all the Monte Carlo and GT parts are really rare, so do not lose them, okay? This is a special front nose piece. It's the same as this piece, only it's flat. Here's the gear. We've got a little groove cut in it right here. That's all we've got. We don't have a keyway cut. That's how we can quickly tell a Monte Carlo from a, or an oil injected Monte Carlo GT versus a, um, a standard gear. And then this is the part that'll be on the front of the crank. So your front of your crank on your GTs and Monte Carlos have two rings and this piece fits over that, right like that, okay? This gets lost all the time. These get lost all the time. They're very rare, don't lose them. It's gonna cost you a lot of money, if you can even find them. And then of course the front pulleys are hard to come by too. So fortunately the front pulleys on the Monte Carlo GT really never go bad. So as long as you've got one, we can clean it and save it. And again, they're the tapered ones. These pulleys for the uh, mixer engines, they break in the early GT750. They break all the time. We're making new ones of these. Should have those um, real soon in stock. But these are always cracked right where the keyway goes. Okay, so you can see this one's marked bad. Um, and then they did make two diameters of these. The real early ones had a real small OD and the later ones had a, had a bigger OD because, again, they were trying to fight that cracking problem. So hopefully this will help you identify some of your crankshafts and your blocks around. But this chart, that'll really tell you what you've got. And again, you can't put a four slinger into a three oil slinger block. It just won't fit. You can, and I've seen it done. I've seen guys get in there with a die grinder and cut all that away on both the cover and into the block so that the crank would fit. To me, I just soon build the right crank. Anyway, that's a real quick look at Saab three-cylinder crankshaft and block internal identifications if you're trying to match stuff up, all right? This is Tom Donnie, today in Fort Dodge, Iowa, signing off.